a behavioral study of the Quaker parrot by Kirsten Santiago. The Quaker parrot is native to South America but have established themselves in Miami and even New York, living in large groups and mating for life. They rely greatly on vision and hearing for perception and communication. Their large eyes can focus over a high range of distances and perceive ultraviolet light. They also use whistles and chirps and can detect pitch, rhythm, and tone. They are very common due to their unusual habitat range. They generally meet in monogamous pairings that they maintain throughout their lives. This is used to their advantage during mating and reproduction. The paper by Dr. De Silva describes the reasoning behind the parrot's unusual success in non-native environments. It determines sexual monogamy helps the species thrive based on mutualisms between mates. Females do not leave the nest from egg to juvenile stages, and the males are expected to breath provide food for both the female and the young. The paper, The Socioecology of Monk Parakeets, Insights into Parrot Social Complexity, describes a study of the behavior in a captive versus wild environment. Pairs are fundamental to social structure but are not necessarily heterosexual and can occur in threes, creating subgroups which allow for an overall formation of apartment living that is unique among the parrots. The paper by Dr. Eberhard describes their breeding behavior as a group. Group nesting behavior likely provides a survival benefit, allowing for the avoidance of individual predator detection and creating a dilution effect. Urbanization poses a threat to the parrots as trees are their primary habitat. A study by Dr. Stephen Emlin explores the parrot's community behavior in captivity and also indicates that the parrot's Unusual colony living likely provides protection. Furthermore, it is possible that unusual triad groups will form in correlation with destruction of natural patterns. The triad group's non-breeding birds are given a colony purpose by helping to build nests for young. This behavior promotes safety in numbers as well as increasing productivity within the group. The paper, paper by Dr. Heather Wilson delineates how parrots generally have adjusted to habitat loss. Birds often move to higher territories for safe nesting strategies in accordance with human disturbances. The article Monk Parakeet Nest Site Selection of Electric Utility Structures in Texas describes the parrot's specific solution, much to human dismay. They nest on electrical units damaging the utility structures. Although the main point of the article describes methods to prevent these damages, it is an important note regarding how Quaker parrots have adjusted and will continue to adjust to the use of man-made structures as nesting sites. With increased habitat habitat loss, it is likely that the parrots will increase group colony efforts and continue to build nests on man-made structures in order to increase building efficiency and habitat space. This can be studied by comparing group sizes in a stressful community by measuring how group dynamics change in relation to a periodic removal of nests. After studying the Quaker parrot, I have realized they are not just cute tree dwellers, but they are actually complex individuals and arguably one of the more successful bird species that have had unlikely non-native success rates due to their behavior.